What? June already? Oh my God, is this year just flying by? <laughs> but at my age, every year is flying by. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top or Not. And it is June. It is Monday the 3rd. Now, as you know, what I like to do is share a hot penny stock with you that I found through my escapades of trading penny stocks. I trade penny stocks every day, constantly looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And normally when I'm looking for a hot penny stock, I'm looking at the charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time and it's pretty bloody easy to see a chart that has heat. You can see a breakout setup. You can see huge bounces. You can see a run to the moon. Well, when you see a chart that has heat, Go rummaging around through their press releases and filings looking for a hot piece of information for a catalyst. If you can find hot news to match your hot chart, bullseye, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I got one for us. This is ticker SRKE Strake Incorporated. I did find this one by looking at the charts. It wasn't hard to see the heat. She has been doing nothing. For a long time, she's been flat, and on May 22nd, she decided to start running and hasn't stopped. She started her run on May 22nd under two cents, and she is now over a dollar. We are looking at virtually 6,000% gain since May 22nd. Now, here's the kicker. There's no catalyst on May 22nd. There's no news press. There's no filings. There's nothing. We did have a piece of news two weeks before. And we had a piece of news a week later, but nothing right around that time. And to be honest, neither one of those pieces of news were really catalysts. Now, the piece of news I'm interested in is the one that came out in October of last year. You see, this company went through a rebranding in September. So much so that they changed their ticker. They changed their name. They took on another business and they say they're diversifying, but I think they're being sneaky. I think they're changing operations. That's just my feelings. I can't prove it, but I wouldn't blame them if they did. So we're going to go through that information and I'm going to take you on this journey just the way I discovered it because it's pretty interesting. So Strake, ticker SRKE, she finished the day at $1.05 and she is up just a little over 31%, which is a bump of 25 cents. She is on the pink tier of the OTC. This is the bottom rung. This is the most risky tier there is because you don't get any validated information down here. The only validated information you get with pinks is a verified profile and a transfer agent verified if they qualify for them. And this is done by an unbiased third party, the otcmarkets.com website. And this is the only validated information you get with most pinks. So I'm always telling you to look for those. We've got those here. But she's a little lower than just pink. She's pink limited. Pink limited means she's late on one or more of her financials. And if she does not get them caught up and filed in time, they will yank her off of the OTC market and throw her down to the expert market. Now the expert market isn't a delisting, but it's pretty darn close. You can't buy or sell shares of the company while they're down there. And they won't come back onto the open market until those financials are caught up and filed. Once they do that, everything is normal. We're back in business again. They also tell us that the company is a shell risk. This means they're in business, but they're not reporting any revenues. Well, that's kind of understandable when you see what they do and why I think they really do need to change operations. So what does this company do? Well, that's questionable and I'll take you on the journey of what made the question marks come up. Starting here, Strake Incorporated is building and operating an online marketplace called River24.us. River24 is an online marketplace of private and commercial yachts and boats that they rent and sell. But you jump into one of their most recent press releases, they tell us here, Strength Inc. is a publicly traded company that specializes in the development and consulting of technology, service, and healthcare sectors. But wait, we've got another recent press release with a different description. Strake Inc. is a dynamic company committed to diverse ventures, including boats and yachts rental platform expansion and cutting edge AI solutions. So we've got healthcare, we've got technologies, we've got renting boats and yachts, 
and AI? What exactly is this company really doing? Well, the first thing I did was to dive on over to their website, River24. And it is exactly what they say it is. It's a place where you can rent and buy boats and yachts. Though I haven't seen any for sale, I see a bunch that you can rent. Here we've got boats and yachts you can get for one day with a captain, of course, somebody to drive it for you. This one here is only $1,900 a day. This speedboat goes for $3,500 a day, but they got a cheap one down here that's only 500 bucks a day. Now I did jump around this site to see what's all going on here and I discovered they've only got 12 yachts. That's it, 12 yachts total and there's just nothing else going on here. And I don't know how much business they can possibly be doing. And to be completely honest, if this is all they were doing, I would not be interested. But I didn't have enough information to know why this thing took off on May 22nd. That's what I was really looking for. So I jumped on over here to the news. Now, before I jump to May 22nd, let's go back and do a little history here. Two years ago, April 2022, the old company, the old management, which was called Vitana X, announced the pre-launch of River 24, their new booking platform for rentals of boats and yachts. So that was two years ago they launched that site and we have 12 yachts on it right now. That's their big, big business and they're a public company. It really is unbelievable. This piece of news is the one I want to read. This came out October 30th, Strake Inc., the new company marks new beginnings with ticker symbol transition and bold leap into AI. This is the only one we're going to jump into. These two, one came out on May 9th, the other one came out May 30th. The run was right there in the middle, May 22nd. And as I said, neither one of these are what I would call catalysts. Both of them are basically talking about changing the rest of the management, putting in new directors, and they want to make sure that you understand they're not responsible for everything that the old management did, but they're here to fix it and make things better. So what is going on here? Well, this news press right here is everything, folks. This news press, how can I put this? It gives us speculation. They tell us what they're doing, but not enough information. They give us enough to build on so that we can start to speculate. And I have seen this happen more often than not. You give us enough information, but not all the details and a stock will run hard. And I don't know if that's what's going on with the stock right now. I don't know why she chose to start running on May 22nd. So we've got lots of tidbits of information in here that we can consume. This came out October 30th. They tell us that commencing October 24th, Strake Inc. is now trading under their new ticker symbol SRKE. This transition marks the culmination of an intensive nine-month process that positions Strake for both organic and acquisition growth. During this transformative journey, Strake underwent a name change and executed a 1 in 2000 reverse split as officially announced by FINRA. And they will tell you, this new management did not do that. They blame the old management and they say it was a mistake. <laughs> I'm willing to live with this mistake. It has brought the OS down to about 4 million and the float is under a million. So it is one I can live with. Considering that this is on the OTC where they don't have a minimum criteria for the float, I'm very happy about that. That's one of the catalysts as far as I'm concerned. Strake Inc. has established itself as a diversified company, exemplified by its drive to expand its boats and yachts rental platform, River 24 Us, on a global scale. <laughs> However, what sets Strake Inc. apart is its newest venture into the exciting world of artificial intelligence. At the heart of Strake Inc.'s innovative platform and app is the GPT platform, a cutting edge AI model celebrated for its remarkable natural language processing capabilities. Strake Inc.'s platform and app offer online business owners a seamless and efficient way to generate AI content that is engaging and original. With just a few clicks, Users can harness the vast potential of AI to create compelling content for their websites, 
blogs, social media, marketing campaigns, and more. The all-in-one app even integrates writing, music mixing, video editing, and other features for comprehensive creating experience. This has a lot of benefits, as you could imagine. It's quick, it's easy, content creation is a breeze, even for those without any prior AI experience. They're making using AI so, so simple now. As Strike Inc. enters the AI sector with its GPT-3 based platform and app, it paves the way for online business owners to revolutionize their content creation strategies. Straight Inc.'s platform and app are scheduled for launch in December of 2023. So that's where I got interested. I went around looking. I could not find the app. I looked around that website, 24.us. There was nothing there. I haven't found any word about health sector, health care, AI. I'm not saying it isn't going to be there or isn't there somewhere, but I haven't found it yet. But Here's my whole point. They've told us they're into AI. They've told us all the different sorts of things that it can do. They tell us that they're still doing the yacht rentals. I think it's going to phase out because it's not really doing anything. And this is probably going to kick in and go into high gear. But we don't see the actual GPT app. We don't see the website. Where do you go? Where do you push the buttons? They say it was already out. Well, this came out in October. So we're still waiting for more news. And as I said, the last two news presses that we had were basically about changing their management and not taking blame for the reverse split. That's it. So I'm thinking we've got enough speculation here for it to run. I'm also expecting another news press to be coming out here soon, which if they give us too many details could slow the run down. All right, so now that you know what they say the company is doing, what they say they're going to be doing, and where the health sector comes into all of this, I don't know. Maybe they'll surprise us with more information about that later as well. Let's take a look at the relative volume for the company today. Try again. Here we go. Oh, she exploded today, folks. Look at that. She's up, what is that, seven, eight times her normal volume. No, she's definitely down there, isn't she? She's been doing about 6,000 shares a day for the last 30 days, and today she did 46,000 shares. Yeah, it is a big jump, but she is definitely under the radar. Now, I want to share something with you. Since we're talking about super duper low volume, I want to know, is it always that low? So I came over here to Yahoo. We're looking at their historical data. I love this page. This is one of them they still let me look at. This shows you every single day that the stock's been on the market, shows you what she opened at, what she closed at, her high and low for those days, and her volume. Love to check out the volume. Well, as you can see, from May 22nd, she has been regular with volume. Lots of volume coming in, and it's been strong. I point that out because she's had days of nothing going on. Popcorn volume here. Look at that, folks. Talk about erratic trading behavior. She's had nothing to offer. Now, all of a sudden, we've had regular volume, and this is the most volume she has ever had since coming on the market in September, October. So, right now, the volume is at 46,000, and we were as high as almost 100,000. So, things are changing right now, and that's what I always say. You want to start watching a stock that's doing something different. It's not doing the same old, same old. This stock has started moving. May 22nd, big question mark. Why did you start running that day? Why hasn't she stopped running? The news that has come out isn't Cadillac, but he's pushing up. And the news I'm looking at is very old, talking about AI, which is the catalyst. We just don't have any current news about it. Interesting. Share structure for this company is outstanding, folks. They had that one in 2000 reverse split. That brought the outstanding share count down to just under 4 million, 3.8 million. Look how many the insiders own, 3.1 million. They got virtually all the shares. All we get is 653,000 shares. Just a little over a half a million, folks. That's incredible. Imagine. When this stock sells 10 million shares in one day, it is going to have to sell every single share 18 times. 
18 times in one day. And a lot of people won't sell their shares, they'll hold them because they know the market's gonna climb. Now you've got supply and demand issues. There's not enough shares for everybody who wants a piece of the pie. So the people holding their shares ask for more. And it starts looking like a short squeeze. It starts going up faster and faster on smaller volume. And that's what we're looking at here with that super duper low float of 653,000 shares. And that is legitimate. There is no hot water here. They don't have to change it. So hopefully they don't change it anytime soon. Market cap for the company. We're at about $3 million. Financials, yeah. Okay, let's take a look. They were making some money a few years back. Was it really with the boats? I don't know, maybe they're pretty expensive. We were at 131,000 back in 2020. I know that's thousands because we gotta add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Jumped up to 1.2 million during COVID. Dropped back down to a half a million. And at the end of July, 2023, their fiscal year end, they had $4,000. Didn't cost them anything for that. Ah, see this over here? This could be the boats. This could be AI. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Quarterly reports. Well, they've started making money. Now see, this is why you can't call them a shell risk. If they've got money on the books, which they have, for basically a year, they've had money on the books. Why does it say show risk? I don't know of any criteria that says you gotta make such and such amount of money, just any money. So blah, humbug on that. Revenues have really kicked up. If you wanna figure that out by percentages, we're going up about what? 800% there, something like that? I don't know, but that's a big jump from 3,000 to 29,000, but it's not a lot of money. But they're not paying anything for it which tells me they're probably working with a digital product now. Taking a look at the balance sheet. Wow. <laughs> okay. $4,000 in the bank. That's not even going to cover six months worth of expenses. Total assets, $4,000. Total liabilities, $335,000, which means we have stockholder deficit of $348,000 that we are holding for the company. And look here, folks, this doesn't look like a company that's in business. This looks like a shell company. They've got no cash. They've got no investments. They've got no assets. They've got just a little bit of liabilities as any company should have, and that's it. They've got a boating business, which I don't believe is doing squat diddly. <laughs> I don't think they're renting anything. Maybe they are, but I don't think that's really their business. I think they kept it so that they wouldn't be considered a shell company. Now that they've got this AI, though we don't see anything yet, I think they can let go of the boating business, sell it to somebody else, get rid of that hunk of junk, and get into AI where we know we're going to make money. So the company hasn't got anything on the books. They haven't got any real facts. All we've got is speculation. Now, we have to take a look at their pink limited situation here, folks. This is the scariest part. And unlike the NASDAQ, they don't give you a countdown. NASDAQ says you got six months to do it. Your deadline is November 24th. And you know by November 24th, they better get it done. Well, they don't give us that deadline until 15 days before it. It's called grace period. It'll say grace period in yellow, just like this. It'll be right down here at the bottom, but they won't tell you the date. And that's what you really need to know. So if you come over here to quote, hit that link, scroll down to proprietary quote eligibility, it'll be underneath PQE reason. Right down here, it will say grace period, and then it'll tell you the actual date, the last day that it will be on the OTC market. The next day, if they haven't got their financials in, they will be on the expert market and stay there until those financials get filed. So where are we with their financials? Well, here's their most recent one. That's for January, 2024. There's their October quarterly report. There's their annual report. Um, quarterly report. All right, looks to me quite possibly we have two missing here first off we haven't got an attorney letter when every i'm sure these are di disclosures let's jump into one and make sure uh unaudited yes these are 
These are unaudited, so these are disclosures, meaning a CPA has not looked at them. These are just numbers that have been added up and thrown to us by the management. We're taking their word for everything. So you have to have an attorney letter go with an annual report since you don't have a CPA looking at it. Not that the attorney looks at the numbers, he's looking at the information. But without it, the annual report is no good. We need that, we need that in a big hurry. And it looks as though we're possibly missing our quarterly report. With an annual report, you also have the quarterly report that falls on the same date. I don't see one here for the 7th. All we had is our late filing notice here, which they were late, they got it out, but they didn't get their uh, attorney letter, and it doesn't look like the quarterly report is there. So I'm thinking they have the quarterly report that needs to come out for July of 2023, and they need their attorney letter to come out with the annual report. They get those out, they're good. If they don't get both of those out, at some due point here, not too far away, we could see this company falling down to the expert market. Speaking of falling down, I see the price just dropped a little bit, four cents. Before it drops too far, let's go take a look at that chart. I can't help but think of Houston when I look at that chart. Maybe that brilliant launch right there has something to do with it. We are looking at ticker SRKE. This is Strake Incorporated, and we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So we've got this opened up to a six month, four hour view. This avails us the opportunity to see the entire chart. Remember I told you the company rebranded in September. They got a new name, got a new ticker. When you get a new ticker, you get a new chart. Well, they came on to their new chart October 25th, closing at about eight cents. She went sideways with a little bouncing, but not much until she dipped underneath the 20, falling down to this 52 week low of a penny and a half. Not really trying to do anything after that low bubble until May 22nd when she had all of this volume come into the picture for no apparent reason and she launched. She jumped up on top of all the SMAs, got on her nine day escalator and has been climbing ever since, hitting that high today of $1.16. Now folks, from a penny and a half to $1.16, you are looking at virtually 6,000% gains which means every $100 bill you had invested down here is worth $6,000 up here if you sell. All of our other SMAs are also climbing along with this nine day and our volume has stayed in the picture ever since it came in right here. Now what I wanna do is grab my Fibonacci since we have no price points above where we're at now, we're not gonna get any supports and resistances. So I'm gonna grab my Fibonacci, I'm gonna poke this low bubble, and I'm gonna poke this high bubble, and that is gonna show us where she could possibly dip to. That's not showing us where she could climb to. All we can really do is look at the static in each day. How much does she move on an average each day? That is what we would consider for her bounces up. But working with these algorithmic supports and resistances, not attached to any price points historically, they are valid. We can trade off of them and the price is going to respect them. So we're going to use this when it pulls back, knowing where to get back in when she bounces. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. Ooh, that's a perfect chart. Low bubble in this corner of a penny and a half, high bubble in that corner of a dollar 16. That is a 6,000% run right there, folks. All of our SMAs are beautifully spaced, climbing up nicely. Our price has not even touched the 20 day SMA once. It is that light that it is just sticking to our nine day SMA. Our oscillators, they are all showing signs of cooling off right now. Everything is pulling back just a little bit. I would watch for it to just bounce off of the nine day SMA. It doesn't show that it's going anything deeper. If it does, I would expect it to maybe drop down to 89 cents and bounce. Our very first support here on our algorithmic fib. Let's come on down to our five day, five minute. Just as pretty, right? Low bubble in this corner, high bubble in that corner, and there we go. She was floating on her nine day. She came down, she poked through the 20, came back up on her nine. Bounced firmly off of the 20 here. Hit her low, she's come back down, and now she's hit the 20 again. Now we see she has a habit of bouncing off of the 20, but this is when she's skimming 
across it. Here, she's coming down on it. She could easily break this right now and come down to the 50, which is a brand new SMA that has just come onto the board. And something I've noticed, when new SMAs come onto the board, most of the time, the price will gravitate to the new SMA. Doesn't matter if the price is below it or above it. It will go to the new SMA. Sometimes it'll stay there. Sometimes it goes right back to whatever it was it was doing. Well, that's kind of what it looks like it's doing right now, making its way towards the 50. So worst case scenario, I would think this might break the 20, come down to the 50 and bounce off of that bad boy and continue her run. Now, what do our oscillators say? Well, come on now, she was going sideways here, hitting her head at the top of this last resistance and then pulling back with what? Four red bars there, hitting our 20. Naturally, all of our oscillators are gonna be pulling back. Not a lot of promise on the five minute chart unless you're looking for an entry. She's already hit the 20. I would watch for her to bounce off of the 50. That's down here at 80, but of course the SMAs move, so you can't use a price. You just got to watch the 50-day SMA. When she hits this, if you see her bounce and start to go up, that may be a good entry point. Now remember, when you get into a stock, you really don't ever want to buy everything at one time because you don't know where the stock's going to go. And if it does dip down, wouldn't it be nice to buy some more cheaper so if you buy 25% of what you want, and you should know how much you want, $1,000 or 1,000 shares, buy 25% as your entry. If she dips, wait till she starts to bounce and get another 25% at a better price. If she starts to climb, well, you'll have to buy in as she's more expensive on the dips. You buy on those buying opportunities and you climb with her on her stair step process. So I'm liking this primarily because of the speculation. She's getting into AI. We haven't heard anything from her since October. We know AI is hot and they covered the spectrum. It wasn't just being able to do websites and marketing campaigns and blogs, but they could remix music. They could edit video. They could do writing. They could do all sorts of things. We just haven't seen anything which is where the speculation comes in. People can build this up to whatever they want in their mind and they will bid accordingly until they know better. And once we know better, then the price will adjust to where it should be. But between now and then, I'm looking at the speculation and the chart is hot. So between the two, we might get a nice run out of this folks. Do some more due diligence. Maybe you'll learn something about AI from this company. And if you do, do me a favor and put it in the comments. Educate me. I'm always liking that. I don't want to be the only one sharing information. Share it with me too. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.